you really sick? You're not just trying to get out of going to see my mother? <laughs> now, Peg, that hurts. <laughs> you know how much I love that huge, fat woman? <laughs> yeah, we're really sick, Mom. I think we have Monte Cristo's revenge. <laughs> Let's rock. I get a open. No Man Presents, live from the Nudie Bar, the Married with Children Podcast. And here are your hosts, Dan, Jamie, and Ash. That's right, it's the Mary with Children Podcast. My name is Al. See me, feel me, touch me, marry me, kill me. <laughs> I'm joined by Jamie. What's up? I'm not feeling so well. I think I might have Monte Cristo's revenge. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Bring that bell, baby. Come on. <laughs> ding a ling a ling a ling. Dan, are you okay? You don't sound too good either. Killed his wife because she had a cold. Might as well she was getting old. Psycho dad. Psycho dad. Psycho dad. <laughs> All right. Yes, guys. It is the historic episode. It is Al dot 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 with Kelly. Season 5. Episode 2, original air date, September 30th, 1990. Kelly gets sick, and Al is forced to play nursemaid. Director Jerry Cohen, writers Stacy Lip, Gabrielle Topping. Those are cool chicks, that's all I'm going to say. Those are some cool names. Lip and Topping. Lips and Toppings. <laughs> uh, I like a girl with things on top. <laughs> Special guest stars, Becky Mullen. J. Anthony Frankie, Teresa Frost. I think there's one more. Um, oh, Pamela Anderson. That seems familiar. Hmm. Actually, two hmm. of those people sound very familiar, or they look familiar, but we're going to get to that later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll get there when we get there. I'm not really sure, though. Uh, so, uh, you know, I picked up on something pretty much right away with this episode. Uh, although Jamie pointed out that Peg does not smoke cigarettes anymore on this show, uh, in the opening credits, Marcy still picks a cigarette out of her salad with a fork. Well, you're not smoking it, so it, I, I think that 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 that, that, that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that's okay as long as you're not actively smoking it. So, Al and Kelly are sick. They're in their bathrobes on the couch. They got tissues. They're coughing. They're hunched over. Peg comes down. Turns out they uh, are both sick, so they can't go with her to go see her mother. It's just her and Bud. Now, uh, Kelly is sick. What is... She gave herself a little diagnosis. What was it? Monte Cristo's Revenge. <laughs> Which has a, a take on, I assume, Montezuma's Revenge, which is what you get when you drink the water in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a Godzilla sequel. And it doesn't usually involve coughing. So <laughs> <laughs> I love how Al looked at her. <laughs> yeah, now your stupidity isn't just hurting you. You're blowing up my spot, honey. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you know the deal with why everyone was missing from this episode except the two of them because we didn't see Amanda Bears at all. Right. Or Jefferson. Oh, wait, he's not there. And... Uh, <laughs> or Steve! Steve's um, God. <laughs> We're, Jerry's still waiting for Steve to show up at the end of every episode. <laughs> like, to see if he can see him on the back porch. Peg and Bud were there for, like, two seconds. So, I mean, do we know why? Was there a reason for that? I did look around. I did not see any official reason, no. Huh. I just It just is interesting to me that the second episode of the season, they would isolate people, you know? Ah, but it was recorded first, if you recall. Oh, that's right. Oh, oh that's Then I why. wonder, I'll bet, I'll bet there were scheduling conflicts right. 
so they recorded that one first and then they went back and did what ended up being the season premiere when everyone was available. Wow, that kind of kills my theory about thinking that it was because they wanted the set of the car and they couldn't get it that first recording week. <laughs> well, uh, that could have been. That could have been. I don't know. I mean, because I pulled that right out of right out of my rear. So I, you know, <laughs> I, I can know. see that I'm just happening. Making stuff up as I go along. <laughs> Good thing this is a show meant for entertainment and not educational purposes. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> that does work in our favor. <laughs> Mom's going to be really disappointed. You know, ever since her dog Rusty died, the only comfort she has is patting your head till she falls asleep. I am not a Labrador retriever. And I never bought the fact that a full-grown dog could accidentally wrap itself in bacon and fall in a microwave oven. Well, what other explanation could there have been? Well, maybe he could have told us if his mouth hadn't been accidentally toothpicked shut. <laughs> No. They find one flea collar in your bed and you're branded for life as a dog eater. Oh well. <laughs> Wrapped in bacon. And how big is that microwave? <laughs> Forced in there. <laughs> That's a horrible, horrible thing to picture, by the way. With his mouth tooth picked closed. <laughs> right. Is is Peg's mom related to Michael Myers? Is this like a whole family <laughs> thing? <laughs> <laughs> Tell her we said moo. You know, it's funny. I met the sheriff in Halloween part one, 1978, uh, yesterday, and he wrote. You did? On, yeah, and he wrote on my thing, maybe it was a dog. <laughs> <laughs> did you ask him to say that? Uh, yeah. For some reason, I said, remember when he talked about Michael Myers eating a dog? Can you just write something about that on there? I said, for some reason, I'd really like that. I'm still pissed at that. Peg's mom wants a book. Uh, Peg's going to get The Pie Man Always Rings Twice. Which, by the way, is a reference to The Postman Always Rings Twice. Yes. Especially at the Donnelly house. Oh, yes. <laughs> so uh, it turns out that the book Bud bought for Peg's mother is called The Red Fudge, Red Fudge of, of Courage. Of Courage. <laughs> and that's a parody of The Red Badge of Courage by Stephen Crane. To me, that just sounded gross. <laughs> I mean, it just made me right. conjure, con considering it was um, like erotic literature, it right. conjured up some really gross things when I when he said that. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was like, whatever they're referencing, first of all, it's kind of a stretch. And why would they use fudge? It's just that's exactly what my mind went okay. to. I'm like, really? Uh, uh, OK. <laughs> you, you know, we got two. Uh, did you miss me, honeys? In a row. One was the legendary opener from uh, the episode prior to this yep. with every bullet so far. But in this one, you got... You gonna miss me, honey? Well, I can't until you leave. <laughs> <laughs> That's just almost just as good. The bullet one is just too big right. to, to compete with. But <clears throat> I think it was also strong because it had to do with the episode so much. Like, just tr just leave. Right. Just go. And I think it, it fit <laughs> like even on the way out. Yeah, he had to get he had to get some uh, some last jabs in there. Well, you know, I left you plenty of food. It's at the supermarket. <laughs> Have a good time, Junior Mint. Damn you. <laughs> Damn you both. <laughs> Damn your eyes. <laughs> A sitz bath is a bath in which only the buttocks and hips are immersed in water. So, yeah, Bud's going to have a really uh, interesting time with Grandma. If it takes me a thousand years and a thousand lives, I'll make you pay for this. <laughs> this, I vow. Have a good time at Grandma's. Yeah, tell her we said moo. <laughs> Have you guys ever fake being sick to get out of something like this? Absolutely. Just podcasts. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought something was weird about you being sick 17 times last year. <laughs> I think you had me confused with Dan. <laughs> oh, right. That was Dan. <laughs> yeah, I was very sick, all right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
yeah, doesn't everyone <laughs> at some point, um, yeah, especially if it involves family. Because <laughs> <laughs> God knows we don't want that. Yeah, and staying home from school was always like <laughs> a lot of it ended up uh, turning out to be a lot more work than actually getting up and going to school. You know, isn't that true? It, yeah. it it's it's like by the time you right. by the time you ended up staying home, it really ended up not being worth all the trouble. Because what I would usually do is I would work so hard mm-hmm. to to <laughs> be convincing that I was sick that I would end up making myself sick. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then I would yeah. do like crap for the whole day and yep. all I would do is nothing. And I'm like, well, that I should have just gone to school. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you feel like you really wasted the day because you couldn't even do nothing successfully. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And then and then you get anxiety or at least I did. No. So. Yeah. I always got anxiety, too. I'm like, what right? if they and consequently, <laughs> when I'm really sick. Like yeah. even when I'm really sick and I, you know, if I can't go to work because I'm really sick, I'm I am anxious the whole day because what if they don't believe me? What if they, you know, how? Right. I mean, and I don't I don't call out of work. I mean, I did that when I was a kid and like in school, but I don't call out of work unless I'm actually really sick. But even then, I'm like, they don't believe me. What if they don't believe me? And so I'm anxious all day long. And I'm like, I should just go. I should just go to work. And then- <laughs> <laughs> you know how many times I walked up the stairs too fast at my house? And I, my mom said, I thought you were sick. I was like, uh, I'm feeling a little better. She's like, it's 10 o'clock. I was like, yeah, you wouldn't believe it. Once I really woke up and everything. Stairs too fast. You got a little too much spring in your step, young man. Yeah, take it down a notch. I used to have the best boss, though, where um, you'd be like, hey, I want to take a day off. He's like, all right, let's see. And he'd go to the computer. He's like, all right, so you got this much vacation, this much sick time. You got this time. And he'd just let you choose from there. Like, it was the greatest thing. And that's where that anxiety goes away, too, where you don't have to call and sick like have you guys ever done the um <laughs> the night before calling when you're wasted well now i just text in the morning like i'll set the alarm you can do that yeah my boss for years my boss has let us text yeah that's huge yeah that's a big one yeah because me the worst part is having to talk to someone <laughs> right. oh yeah and you have to go um <coughs> yeah i'll be in later later this week yep <laughs> I promise, man. If I had to call and talk to my boss in the morning, <laughs> I would like if I was really sick. And like I said, I don't call. I don't fake right. being sick as a grown up, you know. So like if I <laughs> called, I was really sick. So if I called, though, by the time we got to the end of the conversation, I would always be like, okay, well, I'll, I'll come in this afternoon. Like I was just like, I was so, I was so terrified. I was just like, you know what? I'll just come in. I'll, I'll just come in anyway. And then she's like, my boss is like, you, you don't. No, it's okay. Like, stay home. You're sick. Stay home. And I'm like, no, you know what? Really? I, I just, I'll be there this afternoon. It's fine. <laughs> JV subconscious is going, now you and I both know that we both know I'm talking fine right now. So you know what? I'm just going to come in. <laughs> well, that was a thing too. What if you sounded, if you didn't sound sick right. enough? So like you wake up in the morning and you sound really crappy because your throat's all like stuffed up. Right. And then, but by the time you get on the phone with somebody, <laughs> you sound normal. And I'm like, yeah. no, I'm actually sick. How do I get that back? And I'm like, hello. It's like, like, hey, how you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm sick today, so I'm going to stay home. They're like, you sound great. Oh, oh trust me, five minutes ago, I sounded like crap. <laughs> <laughs> I just cleared my throat, brushed my teeth. You wouldn't believe it, but I'm still sick. <laughs> <laughs> those those first rings, though, were everything. When you're waiting, when you're waiting for somebody not to pick up, and you're like, uh, go, go, one more ring until the message. Yes! <laughs> uh, well, uh, these guys pulled it off. They're not going to Grandma's, so after mocking Bud, they close the door, have all their clothes underneath their robes, and are ready to party. Al heads to the fridge after doing the bump. Cause you... That was awesome. I <laughs> love that. I was cracking up. That's great. <laughs> uh, um, Kelly grabs a beer also, and uh, she <laughs> opens it and goes to cheers Al. And realizes she shouldn't be drinking at the same moment he does. To me. To us. <laughs> I meant two beers for you and none for me. <laughs> and this is very reminiscent of Tooth or Consequence, the first episode you guys were ever on. Yep, absolutely. When, right. when she goes, it was getting late. 
and then gra- starts to grab his beer and drink it. <laughs> yeah, and, and and I got a question though, guys. Why why didn't they include Bud? I was really wondering that. Or why did how did that plan come up? Because it seems to me like it would it would either include Bud or not include either of them. Meaning, well, so, yeah, because they're not that close. As we find right. out here, he doesn't really know anything about her. Exactly. I don't know how that was conjured up. They do have like an unwritten, like or unspoken <clears throat> connection that they're the two cool ones, and Bud's sort of a a loser in life. So mm-hmm. he's not cool with the chicks. He's not cool in any way, actually, right now. And Al is, and Kelly is, and Peg is just annoying, and, you know, whatever. So, like, that's the little bond they have. So I do see that happening. Um, that it, it wasn't crazy surprising to me. So yeah. that worked. Well, real quick, would you guys, at this point, Kelly being 18 out of high school, would you just <laughs> let her, would you share a beer with your daughter at that point? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I'm Especially surprised. after something triumphant like that. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, she almost did, too. Um, yeah. Now, did you guys... Um, uh, I don't know if, if I'm getting too too far ahead here, because that's to do with the scene later, too. But did you guys get weird vibes between them in any point in the episode? No. Like, like when she looked at him... Okay, when she looked at him while he's drinking the beer, obviously she's looking at the beer. I, oh, I get yeah, that. she was salivating over it, yeah. But there was also the scene where... Does it imply <laughs> that Al was uh, was hard when Kelly was in his bed by just by grabbing that pillow? Like he he was he clearly didn't mind that she was there, and then he just went right back to his dream, imagining that the girl's the pillow. So is does do you see what I'm saying? Sure. You know what's funny is I didn't even think about that. I was thinking about well, how did he get that pillow back because he threw it on the floor right oh, before he went to sleep. Oh wow! Right. Yeah. Right. Right. I just thought that was a little weird. Al just went right back to his fantasy while his daughter's sitting there. Yeah. Not even just sitting there. She was laying in laying his lap. on him. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's, yeah. Yeah, I, I guess just, you're right, Dan. I did not realize that. <laughs> I just got weird vibes. Daddy, you know, we're going to have a week to ourselves, and I thought that it would be a good idea if we did something together. You know, we never have. Well, sure we did. Well, the day you were born, I carried you from the hospital. <laughs> and uh, ten years later, we had ice cream, and uh, now here we are. <laughs> Okay. Well, how about if we just talk? Great. So, uh, how's school? I'm out of school, Daddy. Good. Good. Um, so, uh, how old are you? <laughs> well, going by the number of birthday parties that you've thrown for me, I'm three. <laughs> God, how the years go by. <laughs> You know what I liked about that is is Kelly, you know, being smart again. Obviously, she's being a wise ass. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like that. I really like that that joke because like they have this thing where she rags on Al a few times in this episode, and and the comedy I think works fantastically. Like it it really is laid out well. But um, yeah, I like that one in particular. Now, how about the amazing joke that Al left Kelly on top of the car? <laughs> when he took her from the hospital to go home. Like, did you guys ever see that jackass bit that they used to do? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Right? He would, like, have the <laughs> stroller, I guess, and he would park the car in front of a big crowd of people on the street. Then he would put the baby on top. Then he would act like he forgot his keys or something and start patting his pants and running around. Then he would just go back to the car, get in, and drive away. <laughs> drive away. Yeah, they would scream chasing after his van. <laughs> Oh my god. That's one of those things where it that's so horrible yet so ridiculously hilarious. Oh, I could watch that all the, I could watch that over and over and I have. I just love watching people's reaction to this cuz they think it's real. It's so bad. I watched a guy drive off with his laptop on top of his car <laughs> and then he turned the corner and it didn't make it. Wow. And I was like, "Oh, that sucks." You don't know much about me, do you? Well, I do know that I carried you from the hospital the day you were born. I remember because I accidentally left you on the top of the car. (laughs) I was about to drive away when I heard this sad little voice say, Stop, you're forgetting me. (laughs) So I got out, let your mother in, and there you were. (laughs) 
I love it when he's like, I heard this tiny little voice that said, "Yo, you're leaving me or whatever she said. And then he's like, so I let your mom in the car. Yeah, because we thought <laughs> yeah. it was Kelly, but it's like, Kelly, you can't even read now. How could she have talked when she was first born? <laughs> right. Exactly. So there's no way he's talking about her, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. So during this conversation, uh, although uh, it's played for comedy, did you get the sad vibe that Al's really not a good dad, like for real? Yeah. <laughs> And it's like, it reminded me of a, they do that a lot with Homer Simpson too. And one of the saddest ones was there was a flashback to when Lisa started walking for the first time. And there's like a, a video and then Marge goes, Homer, look, Lisa's walking. <laughs> he goes, are you recording it? She goes, yeah. He goes, I'll watch it later. Ah. Look, Homer, Lisa's taking her first steps. You taping it? Yes. I'll watch it later. The plane. The plane. No, my freakish little friend. That's a seagull. Oh. <laughs> and he was just watching TV, drinking a beer. And, and I, I love Lisa Simpson. Like, she's my favorite character of, of mm. cartoons ever. So that, like, killed me. Aww. With this and how Jamie feels about Kelly, do you get this little, like, thing like, God, I know it's for comedy, but man... I mean, I've gotten that impression before, you know, just because he'll say things like, you know, um, she's like, I wasn't doing this, daddy. I, I'm a good. And he's like, yeah, whatever. I don't care. You know, I mean, like <laughs> it's we get that all the time. But then, you know, we get the moments where like he's like, I'm coming, pumpkin, you know. Right. So I, I kind of feel like I'm, I'm the way I look at it, I guess, is that he probably knows more about her than, right. than that. And he's just messing with her. I mean, right. I, I, he clearly doesn't know she's out of school, so there's that. But <laughs> right, yeah. Um, He's like, good, good. I mean, but to be honest, I mean, and to be fair, how could you tell the difference? Because she hardly went to school when she was in. So, like, okay. <laughs> right? How is it any different? And and to be honest, and to be fair, on the same point is the fact that they're really horrible to Al. <laughs> His <laughs> whole family, like, it's it's almost, true. It, it they are. They've done some horrible things to him. You know, it's a joke that, like, you know, he, he goes, he, he loves leaving them and all that. But, like, that's got to come from a place where, yeah, all his family does is get him for money. And it's just like, yeah, it probably beats him down. But with that said, he probably holds some animosity to, <laughs> towards her. That's why he's saying these kind of things. But, yeah, I'm sure they do have a deeper connection to what they let on in the episode. But he's just probably being that way with her because of all the hell that she's put him through in the recent years. Well, and in this very episode, she tells she talks right. about the April Fool's joke where they make mm -hmm. him think that, you know, there's actually food and it's hilarious yeah, that he's she's starving. Loving. She's you loving know? it. Yeah. So Yeah, I was right. starving, honey. She's like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so okay, okay. Maybe he is just kind of like you know, inside it'll, inside his head, he's glaring at her, just trying to tweak, you know, just to mm -hmm. get to her because of uh, how she is. Yeah, and he probably does have that father-daughter love deep down. Mm -hmm. So Al watches Psycho Dead for the first time. This is an historic episode for that reason. That will be a thing for years. It's Al's favorite TV show. At last. Single with TV. <laughs> Can I really keep the pig I raised as a pet? Sure you can, son. Now uh, run along and do your chores. <laughs> the boy sure is dumb. Who's that white? Who's the man when you hit your gun? Who's the man who kills for fun? Psycho dead. Psycho dead. And I always remember this one, the funny opener of, uh, Pa, can I keep the pig? Sure, <laughs> sure you can. Now, why don't you go off to the shed or something, go play. You, you hear the door close. <laughs> you hear the sque squealing pig. <laughs> Old Yeller style. Yeah, and then 
What do you think of um, so like that song Psycho Dad? That's a cool tune. So that's a great thing. I always wish they did a spin off of Psycho Dad. Like I always wondered if <laughs> this show would ever be big enough that they could maybe do a spin off and just have this like insanely crazy show. Yeah, I, and I think that if it was rebooted, you got to bring back certain, you know, memorable aspects of the show, like the no man thing, obviously. And I'd say definitely bring back Super Psycho Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Al fakes shooting Peg in the bed, and everybody laughs, so I guess that's still cool at this point. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't care. I think it's funny, and there are many times I think uh, it might have come to that. I'm, no, I'm totally just kidding, guys. Don't unsubscribe. No, he's not. <laughs> Donate to our Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> so he wants to leave her body there as a lesson for all the future women who don't want to cook for him. Uh, Al gets the whole bed to himself. He dreams that Peg is annoying him to wake up and fool around. And he just is like, leave me alone. And she keeps on. Now, at this point, did you know that what were you thinking that womanly hand was? Um, I didn't. I, I honestly didn't know. So you figured it, it just. Mo- OK. So what were you thinking when the reveal came? Al turns around. And there is a stunning blonde laying next to him named Pamela Anderson. My first thought is, wow, she looks great back then. <laughs> it's 1990. I was like, oh, wow. And and honestly, too, this is, um, this is a very memorable episode, I think, for several reasons. But that is obviously, like, the, the number one, you know? Oh, yeah. Well, looking back especially, even back then, I think this episode was... Whew, like just top notch, definitely. Every second was great, all the kind of stuff. But yeah, looking back on it, it takes on a whole new meaning. They went all out here. Like, you know, we've had hot chicks before, but this is a 10. The odd thing is, I was never very into Pamela Anderson. I, I was. I went through with that phase for about a year mm-hmm. when she was like uh, the top thing. So I, I did, but I didn't ever go crazy with the idea. You know, uh, was she like your Marilyn Monroe growing up? Or did you move on pretty quickly? (laughs) Pam Anderson? (laughs) No. For me, absolutely not. I think she was prettier back then before she got all her work done, obviously. Um, But I think how big was she in 1990? Like, at what point in her career was this? This was super, I mean, this was pre-home improvement. Okay. This is just Playboy happened so far. Yeah, I don't think she was really anyone of mainstream knowledge at this mm-hmm. point. You know, yeah. I don't think anybody out there knew who she was unless you followed her, whatever, you know. So, right. yeah, she was just a one of the, as far as the mainstream viewers of Married with Children, she was just a random hot chick. Mm-hmm. Playboy of the Month, February 1990. This was September of 1990, uh, September 30th. So, you know, Mm -hmm. Playboy was bigger. So maybe that got around. I'm still sure that most people really didn't know who was just, to them was just a hot chick. So, well, and for me too, that's not really my type, you know, of girl. It's kind of like to each his own. I think she's a very pretty pretty girl i think she was hotter then obviously but like i said because because it it was before all the the work she had done but um it's just my personal preference that's not the look i would generally go for right me neither Pam anderson though like here's the thing about it you know you're right playboy was different back then everything was different uh in a lot of ways but like she always kept in the public eye for one reason or another, you know, whether it be um, it was kind of like what Kim Kardashian does now in a way. And she oh, always can you kept... imagine if she had a reality show. Oh, my God. She's definitely a part of pop culture at this point. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll zip through this whole thing real fast. Well, Pamela Anderson's 51 years old today. She was born July 1st, 1967 as Joan Goldstein. Um, I guess her father was Jewish. Her mother was like Russian. They came from Canada. Uh, she's best known for roles in television, uh, Home Improvement, Baywatch, and VIP. 
After the rising fame of Playboy magazine in February 1990, she also appeared in such films as Raw Justice 94, Barbed Wire 96, which most people know if they were a fan <laughs> of her. That's like her big movie, of right. her as a star. Blonde and Blonder in 2008, and she was inducted into Canada's Walk of Fame in 2006. And a side note, Debbie Dunning, who also appeared on Marrow Children, would later play Heidi, the tool-time girl in Home Improvement. <clears throat> now it gets to the craziness of Pamela Anderson. So uh, <laughs> Anderson married Tommy Lee, the drummer of Motley Crue, in 1995 after knowing him for about 96 hours. <laughs> if that doesn't say it, I don't know what does. <laughs> <laughs> During their tumultuous marriage, Lee was arrested for spouse abuse after assaulting Anderson. He was sentenced to six months in Los Angeles jail. The couple divorced in 98, so that's uh, three years later. In March 2002, she publicly stated she contracted hepatitis C by sharing <laughs> tattoo needles from Tommy. Uh, she was cured of hepatitis C in 2015. Uh, a sex tape of Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee on their honeymoon was stolen from their home in 1995, Made a huge stir on the internet. Anderson sued the video distributing company, Entertain, uh, Internet Entertainment Group. <laughs> Ultimately, the Lees entered into a confidential settlement a, agreement with IEG. Thereafter, the company began making the tape available to subscribers to its websites again, <laughs> resulting in triple the normal traffic on their site. So they eventually said, okay, everybody could watch this for a certain amount of money. <laughs> called Internet Entertainment Group. <laughs> it just sounds shady. <laughs> it, 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 everything is so shisty about that. And, pl and it sounded so like we're just beginning this internet thing. <laughs> it sounds like they just made up the name of that company just to sell that video. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people do cite that. What are the odds that this tape was stolen from? A lot of people think that this was deliberately leaked for the reasons you said, like the right. keep the fame and keep this. And what does she care? She's been naked anyway. And who knows? You know, and that was and that was the beginning of like a trend that would that happen a lot where, yeah, like like you just said, um, people would would say, oh, yeah, they did it against my will. I didn't know they were going to put it out when they clearly let it out themselves to make money. So, yeah, that that was like the start of it. Yeah. The whole Tommy Lee. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's how thing. we got. Kim Kardashian, right? You know? Right. I mean, without that Ray J sex tape, she'd <laughs> never know she was a rat. Yeah, I mean, and so people, yeah, I mean, have used it to jumpstart careers. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm gonna get into that too as I keep going with this. Believe it or not, so check this out. <laughs> so another sex tape with Brett Michaels and Pam Anderson <laughs> from uh, Brett Michaels from Poison. It went out, and uh, apparently, it didn't go out to the extent. Only four minutes is available online, and Brent Michaels shut it down, so it did not get that same kind of release. On September 29th, pa uh, I have no year here, sadly. Uh, it might have been 2000. Oh, yeah, 2007 then. Okay. Uh, Anderson and film producer Rick Solomon applied for a marriage license in Las Vegas. Rick Solomon, if everybody remembers, is the scum who was in the sex tape with Paris Hilton. So believe it or not, and that was like 2002 or so or whatever, or three. So just imagine Pamela Anderson, after having this sex tape scandal, actually marries a guy with his own sex tape scandal with Paris Hilton. <laughs> Making a career out of it, huh? Like, wow. You gotta, like, what kind of guys is she pick? Like, I... I don't even, I can't even get into her headspace at this point, but... <laughs> you don't even want to. Like, no. you dummy. On October 6, 2007, Anderson married Solomon in a small wedding ceremony at the Mirage between two nightly appearances at Planet Hollywood Resort and Casino. The couple <laughs> separated on December 13th, so not even, like, two full months. Uh, <laughs> so that's everything I have Pam Pamela Anderson, but yeah, I mean, her <laughs> life has just been a whirlwind of craziness. And it's oh, and oh, I didn't even mention she also married Kid Rock. So I mean, yeah, this could go on and on, but you know, we don't have like three hours for this. But uh, we'd have to do a whole like. <laughs> Sometimes real life is funnier than <laughs> made up stuff. I was just listening to you talk about the absurdity that is Pamela Anderson's life and career. And at this point, she ha only has a net worth of five million dollars. Uh, you would think after all the marriages and all the notoriety at some point that she'd have more. But no, it was always a weird thing with her. So um, it's really hot. Al's talking to her in bed. 
Get you married, but it's not going to get you. <laughs> well, hello. Are you going to make me beg? Oh, you will do things, but begging will not be one of them. Is Al cheating on Peg because in his dream he's consenting to be with another woman? Uh, do you guys feel that our subcon that we are held responsible for our subconscious? No. <laughs> no, I, no, I don't mean in a way that he should get in trouble. I'm just no, saying. No, not no, not at all. Although I do think it's funny that he purposely goes back to it. Like he's, right. he he manufactures <laughs> this by the yes. time we get to the end of the episode. But even then, I no, I, I don't think fantasy is cheating at all. I'm if. If Brian said, oh, man, I had this dream and, and me and this girl, we hooked up and we did it three times or whatever, would you be like, well, why would you do that? Didn't your subconscious know we're married? <laughs> <laughs> no, because I'm not psycho. Uh, <laughs> psycho. <dad. laughs> psycho, Jamie. <laughs> I've had my wife doesn't care when I have these types of dreams either. She actually has them. And of course, she has to let me know about them. And I'm like, that's great, honey. And then I try to go to sleep and force it when I do. But, yeah, it doesn't always work out. <laughs> you know what's funny is, uh, you know, okay, you know I'm a big ghost fan. All right, like I love ghosts. Like Patrick Swayze or actual monsters? like The band. Oh, the band. Oh. Yeah. I'm a, oh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of ghosts. And I love Papa, like particularly Papa. Papa Smurf? Three. No, Papa Emeritus. The front man. It's the same front man throughout the band, but with every album, he's a different character. So right. it's this, but it's always the same guy. Anyway, so I have like my, my wallpaper on my laptop is like all the papas, like all of him, like all the versions of him. And so one day I was looking at Brian and had something pulled out on um, his laptop and like he like minimizes it. And all of a sudden there's Elvira. I said like <laughs> boobs, boobs are popping and everything. Wow. So Elvira on his, and I was like, oh, I said, well, when did you get that? <laughs> he's like, well, if you can have Papa, if you have Papa, then I can have Elvira. And I'm like, you know what? You're, it's, you're right. It's fair. It's fair. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not mad about it. You know, <laughs> you're a little it, mad. It was, I'm not mad at all. It was. I mean, it's a really hot picture. It's. But, a... <laughs> it, was, but it was, it was funny though because like he had always had like the stock photo right. on the, uh, like he had never ever ever changed his background and then all of a sudden he, I was like well, when did you do that? he made the jump to boobs <laughs> yeah he's like you know what <laughs> if she could do this I could do it. yeah if me and my wife were jealous or insecure we would have been d divorced or separated long ago <laughs> she lets me have things on my phone the computer whatever and I let her have things and it's like whatever <laughs> like, if this ain't happening in real life, if you want to live out your little fantasy but don't really do anything stupid, then that's fine. <laughs> so, Kelly interrupts Al's dream. Saddest thing in the world. She walks in the bedroom with her pink robe and tissue because she is actually sick now. Mm -hmm. She went to fake it. She was supposed to be gone for a week. Al was supposed to have a jamboree with these fantasies. But Kelly is now going to be home. Uh, she walks in. Al's making out with the pillow. I, I don't know if I've ever actually had to grab an object in my dream. I know I probably move my arms around if I got really into thinking it was real. But I don't remember grabbing pillows or anything like that. So that was funny. Um <laughs> I'm sure if you had, we would have heard about it because on yeah, Facebook, <laughs> yeah, Tiffany, Tiffany would have posted about it. <laughs> and I love how uh, he says, "What would Psycho Dad do?" <laughs> yeah, we should make a shirt. W W P D D. <laughs> That'd be great. So uh, Al comes home, and we get a "What a Day at the Shoe Store" uh, <laughs> thing. Now this. I, I believe it's happened. He may have mentioned what happened at the shoe store, but 
season five, this episode in itself, is a major, major episode for a lot of mainstays in this show. Mm -hmm. One of them, you know, we already know Al's in love with blondes. He made that clear, and I, I believe season... Season one, I think. Uh, even the episode where he put a blonde wig on Peg and brought her upstairs. But mm -hmm. we got things now like Psycho Dad. We have a thing now with when he comes home from the shoe store and talks about the fat woman that came in the shoe store today. God, what a day in the shoe store. <laughs> we had a clearance sale. We had to get rid of all our size 13 quadruple Ds. <laughs> store was packed with women. Well, there were actually only two in the store, but it was wall to wall. <laughs> wall to wall. Two. That cracks me up. Wall to wall women. You think women wall. with you'd think women with feet that big would be slim and beautiful, but you <laughs> You wouldn't believe it. Daddy, I'm sick. We make me some toast. Well, Kelly, you were here all day. Couldn't you make some yourself? No. <laughs> you are your mother's daughter, aren't you? <laughs> Would you mind telling me why you couldn't make some? Isn't it obvious? Because I am sick. And if I touched the bread, then I would get my germs on it, and then I would be eating my own germs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and another reason is we don't have any bread. <laughs> Well, if we don't have any bread, how can you expect me to make toast? Ah, oh, no. Why didn't you call me at the store so I could have picked some bread up on the way home? Isn't it obvious? <laughs> because if I used the phone, then I would be getting germs on it, and then I would be talking to my own germs. <laughs> Come on, give me some bread, Daddy. Wait, I'm just waiting to hear something. Now I can go. <laughs> yeah, that was so great. Can Dude, I that's my life. I swear to God. Oh, yeah. Like, you could do that with me, too. When it I rains. thought he was waiting for a... When he's like, I'm just waiting to hear something, I thought he was waiting for her to say, please. <laughs> oh. And then we hear the thunder, and he's like, there we go. And I was like, oh, that's funny. Just a, such an acceptance of his life. And here's another mainstay coming up on the show. Al comes home and uh, turns out, in the meantime, Kelly ordered a pizza. Are you okay, Daddy? Oh, great. <laughs> Lucky for me, the hailstone stopped just as I pulled into the garage. <laughs> what are you doing? Eating pizza. Some for me? Oh, no, it's all gone, Daddy. <laughs> too bad, because it was a real good one, too. <laughs> What the hell is this? I'm Artie from Pizza by Jake. <laughs> and it's funny because everybody laughed at that. Well, see, okay, so here's here's the other thing, Alex. We talked about several people being on this show. Pam Anderson obviously is one of them. But um, if any kid grew up in the 90s, they know that's actually Jake Summers from California Dreams. So pizza by Jake. The pizza by Jake. Exactly. Oh. Jake Summers, which it blew my mind because I sat there and I got like, you know how sometimes you just know, OK, I've seen this person. And I went right to IMDb and I've never been more excited. Like I used to love that show. It's horrible. It's probably even worse than Saved by the Bell. <laughs> but um, oh, it is worse. Believe me. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. Exactly. How dare you say that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Wow, but like you said, uh, his name is J. Anthony Frankie, I think, because it's Frank with an E at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, this was his first role, and like you said, he went on to do California Dreams. You owe me seven fifty plus a tip. Uh, which was the actual price for a pizza back then? Because I remember saying, like around ninety one, I paid eight bucks mm -hmm. by my house. So yeah, that is pretty accurate. Um, I remember there was another time when pizza was more money, like a lot more. Even in like Home Alone, I think it was like 10 pizzas, 12 bucks or something like that they said. Yeah. But this was more accurate. Well, this was back around the time. Remember when uh, Pizza Hut used to have four bucks, four bucks, four bucks? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Do you remember those? Yes. And then uh, and around this time, my mom and I, like when my friends would come over in the summer and we would order 
barbecue pizza and watch Texas Chainsaw 2. Oh. They were, <laughs> it was it about. Really? Oh, you remember that, Dan. <laughs> yeah, that was our that was our thing. That was that was what my mom and I did. And then like my friends would come over and watch with us, and so we would get awesome. two two medium pizzas for sixteen dollars. Wow! Yeah, exactly. So, wow! Yeah, that sounds about right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. and um, yeah, that was like our rituals. Oh yeah. Mm. So Al walks his kid over to the door, uh, slams him into the door head first, sort of, and uh, he says, "Here's your tip: doors are hard." <laughs> then he just pushes him out. He says, "Keep the change." Everybody cheers. Al couldn't even turn around and do his next line. <laughs> right? People loved it so much, yeah, that they all cheered. Now I do know that this definitely happened already with one of Kelly's boyfriends. I just, God, I just can't place the episode. Well, it's been one of the episodes we covered since we've been on yes, the show. It has. It was last season. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and not only that too. It was um. Oh, was so, it the guy when the guy was making out on top of Kelly when Al turned the light? Was it tooth or consequence? It might have been right because didn't his tooth hurt? So he went downstairs. That guy was on top of Kelly. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. Yep. Wow. And then they had that whole talk. Like I'm a good girl. He's like, I don't care. My tooth <laughs> is killing me. Yeah, I think that was it. Yeah. Now, at this point in the episode, I gotta tell you guys, I'm watching it and I was laughing so hard. Um, at everything at this point, like I, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, wow, I'm like, it's basically this episode's, um, you know, it, the only way it could lose is for itself to shoot itself in the foot, basically. So I was on board, um, at this point, you know, and what would you say? It's about maybe halfway through, maybe two thirds, probably about halfway, right? Halfway. Yeah. It was nonstop at this point. Yep. yep. So we'll come, we'll come back to that. Yeah. So, Kelly says she's trying to remember an old rhyme. Well, I was thinking, and I remember that old rhyme. Feet are cold, starve for pizza. (laughs) No, wait, or is it starve a pizza, eat cold feet? Because she's trying to justify that she ate pizza. Now, what she's really trying to uh, say is feed a cold. Starve a fever. (laughs) It's either starve a cold, feed a fever, or... Feed a cold, starve a fever. Okay, well, here's what I've found. The belief that eating food may help the body generate warmth during a cold and that avoiding food may help it cool down when overheated. But recent medical science says the old saw is wrong. It should be, oh, it should be, feed a cold, feed a fever. Starve pizza, eat cold feet. <laughs> well, at least we know your fever shot right past your IQ. <laughs> yeah, that's a some line. No, that's a great line. Like, it is just, I mean, these, this writer, this uh, Lisa Lips or whatever her name is. Yep. That sounds like a porn star. Hold on. Lips and Toppings. The team of Lips and Toppings. (laughs) Yeah, Lips and Toppings. (laughs) Stacy Lip and uh, Gabrielle. What it pretty much taught me is you could just have a show with Alan Kelly and I would be totally happy. (laughs) Exactly, yeah. Yeah, the rest are just bonus. (laughs) The rest are just Lips and Toppings on the Red Fudge. (laughs) The best is when Al rings out the bread and the water comes gushing out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll just we'll have this bread later. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy, you're so funny. I love you. Do you love me? Uh, love, hate. Look, we're family. What's the difference? <laughs> uh, Kelly, go be sick in your room. Daddy wants to watch tube top wrestling. No, but you can't, Daddy. Because tonight is the big music video countdown. It's the top 10,000 classic videos of 1989. <laughs> oh, come on. Watch with me, Daddy. Maybe you'll see one of your favorites. Uh, well, I, I really like the oldies, you know. See me, touch me, feel me, marry me, kill me. Kill me. <laughs> what he's really referring to is the song by The Who, See Me, Feel Me. And the lyrics are, see me, feel me, touch me, heal me. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, one of Al's favorite tunes, I guess. I never got into the Who, so I really, and it, I, I, I'm glad I didn't though, because uh, maybe <laughs> one day I'll get into them, and I have a whole new thing to listen to. You know, I listened to. I lived about two miles from the Lakewood Amphitheater when I was growing up, and um, there were, there was one night that the Who was in concert there, so I slept out back in my backyard in a sleeping bag, oh. and just pretty much heard the entire concert. Good night, pumpkin. Oh, one more thing, Daddy. Why? Did you hear a tornado's coming? You want me to go out for pantyhose? Daddy, 
Patty. You know I haven't worn pantyhose since I was seven. So, during this conversation, Kelly claims that she hasn't worn pantyhose since she was seven years old. But she's clearly seen wearing them in the intro opening credits of this show itself. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, she's lying. Anyway, while the pizza boy was going through the drawers, he found this. What's that? It's a bell. <laughs> Remember, Mom got it last April Fool's. She'd ring it, and you'd think dinner was ready, so you'd come running down the stairs with a big smile on your face. And then when there'd be nothing to eat, we'd all be laughing and pointing, and then, then you'd go upstairs all sad and hungry. <laughs> Stop, Daddy. If I laugh, I'm gonna cough. But I was starving. <laughs> I was starving. <laughs> oh, God, you cracked me up. Anyway, I just thought that it would be a good idea to call you when I need something. But don't worry, I'm not gonna use it unless it is really, truly necessary. She instantly, it's, it starts ringing for stupid things. Uh, Al's upstairs, she rings the bell before he even gets to really step in the room. Yeah. That right there shows how sweet he is, though, because, right. you know, he could have just said no. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, did you guys <laughs> notice the uh, the clock shaking when he the first time he came down and she was like dancing when he came around the landing? The grand the grandfather clock was like, whoa, when he was <laughs> no because <laughs> set fake sets. <laughs> So Al's dreaming that he's married to a hot blonde who is a wealthy executive uh, who gives Al her paycheck when he comes home. <laughs> I love that that's a part of his fantasy. Honey, I'm home. <laughs> How was your day? <laughs> well, a wealthy executive's life is a busy one. But why should I bore you with that? Here's my paycheck. <laughs> What did you do today, dear? Well, I watched TV and drank beer. You're so clever. I do what I can. I do what you can with me. And pulls off her top, and she's wearing a red tube top with her hooters bursting out of the top of it. Mm -hmm. Man. Amen. Unbelievable. So... Let's get to her. Her name is Becky Mullen. Uh, she was a glow girl called the... Now, I think there's a lot of girls called Farmer's Daughter, so... Yeah, but they, they, all, had a, they all had a different front names. She, is, uh, she was in several Andy Sedaris films, and if, um, if hmm. you guys out there, if you, if you are listening to the show because you you like the hot chicks in this show then i recommend you check out some andy sedaris movies they are like hard ticket to hawaii and um that's like one of the better known ones but everything's mm. hard though right because i see yeah <laughs> she was in hard time and planet earth and hard hunted and then black scorpion there's hard in a lot of them and he uses andy sedaris used a lot of porn stars and um, Playboy models, or, like, m magazine models. I like the way this guy thinks. So the acting wasn't always great, but there's a lot of TNA, there, and things, are get, things get blown up a lot. Because uh, they're, they're action films, um, and we have the whole Andy Sedaris collection. There's, like, you 12 do? of them. Wow. Yeah. There's 12? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, wow. Yeah, well, she's super hot. I would have no problem... And I did think her acting was pretty good for just being a hot chick, so this all makes sense. And of course, guys, we will fill you in on the information you really want to know. Yes, she was nude, and yes, they look even better out of that red tube top. So Kelly rings this damn bell. Daddy! What is it? What is it? I can't sleep. Well, have you tried counting something? Like the seconds you have left to live. Now, she's borderline peg at this point. Right. Like she, Al said it earlier, but she is her mother's daughter. Like, wow. 
Mm-hmm. Peg is primarily responsible in the history of married children for ruining any fun Al might have. And, man, Kelly's right there to do it for her if she's not around. <laughs> she asks, and I love how he says, have you tried counting something? Like, the seconds you have to live. To live. <laughs> that had to be, the, like, this episode has, like, five amazing lines like that. I think I think all of them are 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 near amazing. To be honest with you, like I, I told you about, like when the halfway point hit, and I was like thinking to myself, okay, this is one of the the best episodes I've ever seen. Definitely the funniest. And um, as I'm watching it more and more, I've never laughed harder. Like I was dying laughing, and I know we're not even through the whole episode yet, but at this point, like I was cracking up at everything. Yeah, it is gold standard married with children stuff. Uh, I'm definitely gonna reflect that in my rating. Mm-hmm. I want you to tell me a bedtime story. <laughs> you know, like you never did when I was a child. Please. It's not going to work. Okay. <laughs> it's not a happy story. It's a story of great sadness and woe. Once upon a time, there was a man who sold shoes. He was a good man, but somehow good things never came to him. Did I mention he was a great athlete in high school? <laughs> People cheered him. That was before the red thing appeared. <laughs> Darkness fell on Shoe Town. <laughs> Who would take on the red beast? Who would battle? Who would marry it? <laughs> the little shoe man stepped forward. Or perhaps the others just stepped back. <laughs> At any rate, an unholy union was born. So were two unholy children. <laughs> uh, so that's another kind of funny line. And then we get the iconic moment where Al first mentioned scoring four touchdowns in a single game. Yes, yes. And the lowly shoe man who once had been a mighty athlete in high school and scored four touchdowns in one game and had many offers to junior colleges and could have made something of his life. <laughs> Laid down and died. <laughs> the end. So, just for the heck of it, I looked up some stuff about things like that, like, you know, like, has anybody actually ever done something like this? There is a guy that I was confused for in the Poke High game, Gail Sayers. <laughs> On this day in 1965, rookie running back Gail Sayers of the Chicago Bears scores six touchdowns in a single game against the San Francisco 49ers at Wrigley Field, tying the National Football League for most touchdowns in a single game. Other than that, it says, so yeah, he tied and he joined Ernie Nevers and Dub Jones during <laughs> that. So these guys have six. So with such close references to the Chicago Bears, I found it interesting that uh, they only did four with Al. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if that's to make it just unique to him. Right. Like, we're not going to break that real-life record by saying seven, because that's stupid, and we're not going to just have him be like everyone else and do six. So they just made it four, which is really perfect. Perhaps. I, I agree. Absolutely. That's legendary. So like we said, uh, you got Psycho Dad slamming the kid into the thing. A uh, fat woman came in the shoe store today, and we have four touchdowns in a single game. This episode is really kickstarting a lot of like things about this show that the general public sort of know. Like even if you were a casual watcher, they might remember Psycho Dad. They all remember four touchdowns. Uh, you know, just like these little things. Um, re this episode's responsible for really um, solidifying this as part of these people's characters. It's it's a classic by far. When he's telling that, obviously, like you said, you have that joke. But as they're panning in 
on his face. Oh, yeah. That was Ed O'Neill, like literally Al Bundy. Like if you were to just show any any clip and it would best encapsulate Al Bundy, it would be that one. The facial expressions, like I was literally dying because it's all one take. Yeah, like obviously a lot of these sitcoms are, but how they zoomed in on his face was so perfect and he nailed every comedic beat Right. I was like, I'll be honest with you. I had the uh, episode rated before it was even over, over at that point. Wow. Absolutely. And it just kept, it keeps getting better still. So I agree. So Al's dreaming of Pamela Anderson again. <laughs> As in Al Night Long. <laughs> As an L, I want. Well then, L, you shall have. Now, I, at this point, I'm stopping this here for a second, just to say that this is a really memorable episode to me because I, I had this. Um, we had a summer party here last year, probably exactly this time last year. I have a garage, and there's no car in it. There's just my motorcycle. So. Both the big garage door was open, the back door was open, and we had lights on in there. And, and I have a, a huge TV in there that I took from my parents' house. It's the old roundbacks. So I put the PS2 in there, and I, I, I just, like, put stuff on while we're all hanging out. Like, there was, you know, people had a bonfire. Other people were in the house. We were in there playing darts. Everybody had a bunch of beers. It was, like, a great time. And I had this disc in and just started it at this. I just pressed play all. And this episode was like one of them. And we were all playing everybody's way into it. And every time these two chicks or any of these scenes came on, that darts took a pause for a minute. And it was just like <laughs> the greatest time. Yes. And Al's everything he says, like everything they say, well, do what you can with me. And, oh, you're going to do a lot, but begging won't be one of them. Like, it was just like the ultimate guy episode, man. And it was the best thing to have with a bunch of guys at a party and just have that on in the background. And it's so good it became foreground so many times. So that I just remember definitely this point when I was playing darts and everybody was just so into this at this exact scene. Then uh, so the other chick walks in and I love the look on Al's face because it's that – surprise look but he's not worried at all about the other girl finding him with the other girl <laughs> it's just like per it's it's played so well honey i'm home <laughs> al hercules bundy <laughs> who is this person who's this alzy <laughs> well well <laughs> well obviously i'm having a hell of a dream <laughs> Rather, rather than take time and explain it all, why don't you two just fight over me right here on the bed <laughs> while I watch and take pictures? <laughs> and the winner gets to have me first. <laughs> and third and fifth. <laughs> you may begin. Well, clearly I'm having one hell of a dream. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys ever know that you were dreaming while you were, but somehow was able to keep going with it? Absolutely. Yeah, sometimes I don't want to. Like, sometimes, like, I know I'm dreaming and I want to get out of it, and I can't. Mm, yeah. Um, like, sometimes you'll wake up, and then if you go right back to sleep, you you know, you right might be able it. to get back into the dream. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, so that's... That was cool that he acknowledges it, at least. I mean, by now he has to know. And I love how he's able to get these girls to look exactly the same every time. <laughs> yeah, it's good memory, yeah. yeah. It's pretty good. <laughs> by the way, I love how the video camera just appears there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you guys feel bad for enjoying this episode so much? No. Why should we? Did that other hot blonde die or something? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think you should, but you know how you know how it is today. Like people are all uptight I, about stuff like this, and right. 
I was just thinking about, um, remember when the man show came out and there was also the X show at the same time. Um, Mm. but like the man show is the one that everyone knows. And they said like in the very beginning, when they started that show, Mm -hmm. they're like every episode of this show will have girls on trampolines. (laughs) Oh yeah. I remember that was in the commercials. People lost their minds. Mm -hmm. Like, like even back then. Yeah. Uh, about that show, you know, about how right. incredibly sexist it was and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and I'm just I'm just thinking, would something like this, like would an entire episode devoted to girls in lingerie, <laughs> <laughs> including <laughs> including a right. scene where they're wrestling each other? Because there's a new show that's supposed to be coming out and um, it's about a girl who um, goes to school like she's like fat. And then she loses a bunch of weight, and then she starts to get revenge on the people who picked on her when she was fat. I forget what it's called, but uh, ravenous maybe or something like that. And Monte Crisco's Revenge. Yeah, something. Is like this that. on Netflix? People, <laughs> no. uh, yeah, um, <laughs> Alyssa, Milano, Alyssa Milano was involved in it, okay. and people were like freaking out on her because like she was like very she had a big role in the Me Too movement, and they're like, how can you? you know, be a feminist and then support, you know, a show where a girl is only considered worthwhile after she loses a bunch of weight. And she's like, no, you don't get it. Like the the point is that she is seeking revenge on those people. And I don't know. I'm just wondering, I'm like, do you now looking at this and like, Alex, you're talking about how like during your party, like everybody was like pausing. It was like a really big, it was a really big guy moment, you know? I'm like, do you think, you know, do you, feel bad about that or should you do you think you should i don't think you should alex I, was so proud in that moment he was you like were, yes, you this were. Is the and, best episode <laughs> ever and you know? i'm i'm over here going good for you like i really <laughs> right. like i want you to be happy with that and but i'm just wondering like if it would work today you know you know what's funny about that jamie i feel like i didn't even think twice about it when it comes to fantasy stuff it's like whatever you know it's just well that's the way i look at it and i think it's fun it's you funny. know regardless it's fun and funny and i don't think there's anything it's perfectly normal you know right. for guys to have these kind of fantasy for anyone to have these kind of fantasy. i mean i don't absolutely I don't care yeah, um, but stuff, you know, yeah. you have, you know, you have those groups of people and I'm sure there were even some back then who would be like, this is total objectification, you know? Right. Um, right. we're like, well, yeah, of course it is. It's a fantasy. That's <laughs> And how perfect for Al Bundy to lead the way <laughs> when they say, join us. I would also be like, okay. So no, I don't feel too bad about it. <laughs> no, not at all. Join us. They invited him in. So, right? Yeah. yeah. Who was he to that deny That was him? their choice. Exactly. <laughs> How could he deny these poor women? <laughs> Girls, there's not enough hair whipping around. Unless you join us. Yes, please join us. Well, okay. (laughs) Here comes Daddy. So did you guys notice when Al jumps into the bed that the wallpaper behind him does not match the rest of the bedroom? Mm. It's really obvious once you notice it. But... I didn't notice it for years. Wait, the the jumping yeah. scene when they just disappear and he hears the bell in bed. Ah, <laughs> yeah, that is classic too. It's yeah. so stupid. I did, got... did notice for the first time that the bedspread matched the wallpaper. I hadn't noticed that before. Oh, I never noticed that. He comes out of his fantasy midair though. Because he hears the bell, like yeah, for the worst reason. <laughs> oh, I just wanted you to see how cute Buck looked with the bell. <laughs> Wait, like you wouldn't come out of it because you're physically jumping? It's a noise. Oh yes. Wait, is. Is Al sleepwalking? Did That's he, what I'm saying. It's did he so... literally jump into the bed? He had to have. Exactly. That wasn't a dream. I don't even think about that. 
I know, that's what I mean. Like, why wouldn't he wake up <laughs> as he's catapulting himself on the bed as opposed and he wakes up mid-air to the bell. It's so stupid. Wouldn't he hurt those poor girls if he jumped on them like that? Right. Yeah, what was his plan? Uh, yeah, what was he going to do if this all worked? <laughs> I mean, Pam Anderson would provide some uh, some nice uh, some cushion. Some cushion. Comfort. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was he going to, like, double clothesline these girls or what? What are we talking here? <laughs> I, never, I never thought that. He was sleepwalking and, and going through the motions for real. Right. So he was standing in that bedroom as if there was a video camera in front of him. But he, he had a camera. But he was just standing there with nothing there. Wow. Exactly. It's funny because, like, whenever I watch this sporadically, you know, just on TV or whatever, or my whenever I got to it on one of my tapes that had six hours of married children, it's not like I ever really expected. It always kills me that Al wasn't able to follow through with all this. And when Kelly rings that bell, it pains me. And it's like, I kind of forget I'm watching a comedy sitcom. I guess I don't really think like uh, the most amazing porno on earth is going to break out right on screen there or anything like Al and these two chicks or anything. But I don't know, like something about it. I still feel like God just let this happen. (laughs) And it doesn't. And it's so painful, man. Because I'm living through Al at this moment, and it is just brutal. Uh, So, God, Al throws the bell and causes a car accident. (laughs) Kelly has to tell him something, and he goes like, What do you want? Uh, I love that. Yeah, like, that was that's... a weird voice. <laughs> it was right, and that was like his limit right there. You could tell, right? Oh, Daddy, one more thing. What do you <laughs> want? <laughs> he would have been a good Freddy Krueger, I think. He kind of looks like Robert England in a weird way. His dreams would be a little bit different than the one he just previously had, though. I want. I want. <gasps> <Achoo>! <laughs> Say goodnight. <laughs> he walks in. Kelly sneezes right in his face. It's time for no man to take a little break in the jiggly room. I'm the DJ, and I'm going to play a little bit of music that was on this week's episode of Marry With Children. So luckily, Matt Thompson has not killed me for forgetting to include this on our last show. You wouldn't believe our schedule lately, man. It was tough. So luckily, I remembered this week. So this is a little thing that Matt sent us that he wanted played on our last show when we reviewed We'll Follow the Sun. Check it out, guys. Hi, Dan, Janie, and Al. This is Matt Thompson from Australia. I'd just like to say something about this episode, We'll Follow the Sun. Well, funny story when I was watching it a few years back. My dad was in the next room having a serious conversation with my uncle via Skype and I was watching this episode so loud and laughing so hard my uncle thought there was a party in the next room. How about that? <laughs> anyway, love your work and season five, my second favorite season. Keep it up. The next day you get a nice uh, daytime shot of the Bundy house. It says, uh, you don't, I don't think you've seen this shot before with that much light either. Um, It says four miserable days later. So we assume Al probably kept having these interrupted dreams. Who knows? But she might have interrupted them in different ways. Or else, because if they were miserable days, then even though the bell's gone, they they wouldn't be so miserable if he was able to go through with these fantasies. So he he wasn't for some other reason. We just don't know. God, I feel great. I'm so glad I'm over with that cold. It was death. So, how are you today, Daddy? Mm -hmm. I'm better. My fever is down to 120. (laughs) Kelly feels great. Al is sick from the sneeze she did to his face. He has a fever of 120. (laughs) Now, obviously, guys, uh, a person (laughs) could not have a fever of 120. That's totally comical. But I was curious as what a person could do. Uh, 101.5 degrees. Anything above this is leveled. Uh, level is classified as serious fever. 
Lower doesn't mean you don't have an infection, but that's when you've crossed the threshold of concern. 107 degrees, multiple organ failure can occur, <laughs> and the high temperature <laughs> itself might bring on seizures. <laughs> yeah, I mean, usually at like 105, they're, they have started packing you in ice already. Yes, absolutely. You know, yep. 104, 105, um, uh, yeah, I mean, he'd be dead. He'd be he'd, he'd be cooked. I mean, he'd be cooked from the inside out. But. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I just wanted to thank you for taking care of me all week. That was very sweet of you, Daddy. And if there's anything that you want, you just ask. Well, thank you, honey. I could use maybe a little crust. To... Oops, I gotta go. Goodbye. <laughs> thank you. Sadly, after Al took care of her for a week, Kelly leaves Al with nothing. <laughs> She's dibs. So this is why I think I'm starting to buy into your thing. That's why he likes to twist the knife in Kelly, because he knows. She's mean. I mean, it's like, I mean, what's funny is she's like, I love you, Daddy. And do you love me? And then like, oh, you thank you so much for taking care of me. If you need anything, just let me know. Oh, gotta go. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> No eat, no drink, no money have I none. <laughs> well, at least there's one thing they can't take away from me. <laughs> Ow. Ow. Coming. <laughs> Anima time! Someone ring the bell! <laughs> oh god, I can't wake up! <laughs> she can't take his dreams away this time, so he goes to bed, but when he sees who's calling him, it's a big red headed nurse with an anima for Al. <laughs> Where did that come from? I wonder. Uh, I don't know. Just something you don't want. <laughs> I actually expected what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be Peggy, like home, like right. she, had come, like right. she had come home. Like he finally gets a moment to himself. He finally gets to enjoy his fantasy, and I figured it was going to be her, like actually there. And so then when we saw the nurse, I was like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> yep. Teresa Frost, she was just in this and an episode of Night Court. Well, the big joke is Al cannot wake up from this dream because there's no bell to wake him up, so he is stuck. Hey, Bundy Universe, this is Chris from Sri Lanka, and you're listening to the Married with Children podcast. And I have a Facebook page, it's called Reliving Married with Children. I hope you like and follow my page. And maybe I'll catch you in the Married with Children podcast group sometime. Take care now. No Ma'am will be right back to wrap up this week's review. Be sure to join their Facebook group page for all the podcast news and updates. Be sure to subscribe to them on the Apple Podcast app and please leave a review telling them what you think of the show. To subscribe to their YouTube channel, just go to channels and search up Married with Children podcast. Now they're available on the TV Time app. Go to your app store and type in TV Time. Join their Patreon and support your favorite podcast with a small monthly donation. You can email them at marriedwchildrenpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for checking out this review. Now Dan, Jamie, and Alex are going to give their final thoughts on this week's episode. All right, guys, how many touchdowns in this historic episode where Al mentions that for the first time, how many touchdowns are we scoring in one game for this episode, Jamie? Ooh, I am apparently a better football player than Al because I'm oh. going to be scoring five touchdowns mm. in this game or in the game. I don't I forget what you said, but... <laughs> 
<laughs> Either way, I really love this one. It's very simple. Mm-hmm. It is. It's very simple, but I I love it for that. And I really didn't miss the, all the other characters. I had a wonderful time with just the simplicity of this pared down episode. Wow, nice. Five out of five. How about you, Dan? This episode was off the hook. Like the the comedy was was stellar all throughout. Like I said, I had this thing rated uh, way before it was even even over, and and I honestly think that um, I mean, obviously, so far this season, it's my favorite episode. But it's it ranks up there probably right behind the Bosco episode as my favorite so far. So wow. absolutely five touchdowns, not four, but five. Love it. Yeah, this is a Hall of Famer. We are all better at football than Al tonight because <laughs> <laughs> we're put, we're scoring five touchdowns in this game for this episode tonight. Um, <clears throat> Al with Kelly is amazing. It's iconic. I love it every time. There's not a, a single dull second. It has so many iconic mainstays of the show. It has a great opener, a great ending. What a great premise that he can't wake up and he's stuck <laughs> and it's this. Like, it's just perfect for Al's life. Yep. Great appearances by Pamela Anderson and that other chick, uh, Helen something. <laughs> yep. There's not a single flaw in this episode, really. And even little stuff like the pizza, the bell, all great, all classic. <laughs> Tune in next week while we review Su Casa, His Casa. Al cancels his auto insurance and the kids get into an auto accident.